That's right. Air test systems is down 70% over the past year. It's up 10% today, but that isn't a, a whole lot of good news because in order to get back to where it was a year ago, it's got to go up 140%. So what I wanted to do was find out who's in this with me. Who else owns air test system? Am I the only one who believes this is a short-term event? This is something that will correct itself as the EV market comes back as the United States makes it easier and more attractive for you and I to buy electric vehicles and thus the manufacturing electric vehicles will surge on and air test systems will go up their 140% and maybe another 400% and I'll have made an excellent investment. So what I want to do in this video is show you who you're in bed with if in fact you own air test systems like I. Who are the hedge funds and what is their exposure? And how, why are they holders and, and uh, continual buyers at the price they are? And I'm going to share a website that's going to give you that information. And then I'm going to take you to someone who I, uh, also is on YouTube, who I think does an excellent job of explaining the semiconductor market, and in particular, in this video, air test systems. I think this will make you feel better about what you own if you own air test systems, and maybe it'll teach you a little bit about how I approach investing and how maybe you can join our tribe and sign up for our pro platinum program where you can see the, how I work with 34 stocks that are involved in uh, semiconductors, accelerated computing, and the future of in artificial intelligence. Take a look at what I found who all is also in air test systems with us. This is a website that I found called uh, hedgeflow.com, and I pulled up AEHR. And what it does is it shows me who the hedge funds are that own uh, AEHR and what their positions, and, and it's a lot of detail. Let me just show you. Here's uh, Weiss Assets. It represents 1.08% uh, of their portfolio. Uh, they own four, 544,000 shares, and as you can see, it's a new purchase, but the, the fact is, this is as of December the 31st. They own this stock. Uh, their average price is $36.12, and it's currently selling for about 12 It's up 10% today, but as you can see, uh, it's down substantially. Um, and then it goes through, I, I just wanted to share this with you because these are the hedge funds and you can see they all own it at about 36. Here's one at 22. This is, uh, dry husk capital. This uh, actually, he reduced his holdings by 87%. And you can see here that they, they've pulled back their holdings, but you have other people who are coming in and adding to their, uh, their holdings. This happens to be Citadel. Um, he's down, he's added to his holdings, and you can see they added to them somewhere in um, last quarter, uh, the end of December more than likely. They hold it at $37 a share. Um, so you, I guess what my takeaway on this is that there are some very intelligent, smart hedge funds that hold a substantial position, and some of them are building their position. You can see that here, uh, added to it uh, by uh, 10%, and their their average price is 23.96. So, I, I guess that reinforces to me that it's beyond it's it's that someone other than I believe this is a company that is being pushed down as a result of the lack of interest in semiconductors uh, for EVs, PCs, telephones, toasters, whatever, and that this company will come back very strong in, uh, in the future. So uh, I thought this was worth looking at to help substantiate my position in AEHR and believe that by the end of 2024 and the first of 2025, uh, I'll have substantial gains in AEHR.
Now I want to share with you a video that I came across. I really like these two people. Uh, they went, run a YouTube channel called uh, Chip Stock Investors, and they do an excellent job of doing a lot of research in detail on the stocks that they follow. This is a video they just recently put out um, on air test systems, and it does a better job than I can of explaining what is happening and their dependence on uh, chip makers like on semiconductor for their business. And the, as they say, they are an upstream uh, supplier, and until the uh, market and EVs gets back on track, uh, Air Systems is going to have to suffer some uh, decrease in price. Now, as I said, they're up 10% today. I can't find exactly why they're up 10% today, but for after being down 70%, to regain that 70%, they got a long way to go. They got to go up 140%. Watch this. Put these people on your subscription list and learn from them. Let's go ahead and jump into this discussion on air test systems. Right. Okay. So as you can see from that preliminary Q3 fiscal year 2024 update on Monday, March 25th, air stock is back down to its lowest level since the summer of 2022 when we were in the depths of the bear market, both for the market overall and for the chip stock industry in particular. Not coincidentally, the last time the stock was down in the dumps in the summer of 2022, revenue and profit were also hitting their peak. So our outlook really has not changed. We last covered air and really the story is about on semiconductor and other silicon carbide manufacturers. We'll get to that here in just a second. That's really what this story is about in our opinion. This is not coincidental folks. Like we've been talking about, we are entering a downturn and things were going to remain pretty rough and tumble for air. As, as they lap this the peak in the cycle and enter the downturn. But the numbers were quite ugly for Q3. You can see those preliminary numbers here in this chart that Nick created. Q3 2024, 7.6 million in revenue, which is a 56% year-over-year decrease. Gap net income or loss, they said 1.5 to 1.8 million, which it was 4.1 million last year. And then adjusted net income or loss down 0.9 to 1.2 million, which it was at 4.7 million positive last year. Now, before we come back to the implied outlook for the fourth quarter, let's hit on what is actually happening here. I said the story was primarily about on semiconductor, which up until just the last couple of quarters was far and away Air's largest customer at 80%, 90% of revenue that has moderated. We don't know what it'll be for this current quarter that they just released in Q2 fiscal 2024, which coincides roughly with the end of calendar year 2023, on had actually dropped to like a 40 to 50% customer as a percentage of revenue. But you can see on semi here, this diagram they provide of their silicon carbide based chips in vehicles in the bright blue, see them clustered there in the front of that car, in the back of the car, and then the floor of the back seat. That's roughly where the motors are in an electric vehicle and the battery, of course, and especially some of the equipment that goes into the charger. Air test systems, as Casey explained a couple months ago, when she put together this chart, is an upstream equipment provider for manufacturers like On Semi, as well as some of its other silicon carbide manufacturing customers like ST Micro, Mitsubishi Electric, Wolf Speed. But what happens downstream with EV automakers and other parts manufacturers for the auto industry? Obviously, has a big effect on those midstream chip manufacturing customers, which in turn can have a really nasty impact on air, one of the more upstream companies. Small business, very small changes in the downstream market can have a really big impact the further upstream you go. You can take a look at this visual as well. Air is not the most upstream where base materials are mined, but it's there at the inspection point, the wafer burn in inspection point. When you take a look at the press release from AIR this week regarding those preliminary results, the main story has not changed. There is still an oversupply in inventory for these automakers, and that is driving that downturn in air test systems revenue and sales. Yeah, so basically what's happening here is the long-term demand for silicon carbide chips for use in electric vehicles and charging stations and 
other parts of, of the power grid, as well as silicon photonics, which we haven't talked about in a while. Maybe we'll circle back to that at some point, but that's a very small market at this point. There's still long-term demand for these devices. What's happening is if you're a chip manufacturer like OnSemi and your customers, your automaker customers tap the brakes and say, hold up, we have enough chips for now. Of course, OnSemi is going to say to Air, one of its equipment suppliers, hey, we actually don't need to expand our manufacturing capacity at this point. Let's just hold off for a quarter or two. So again, just illustrating the outsized impact this can have on Air as the ripple effects of the automaker market back up the orders in the supply chain. So from this, we see that we're in good company, that uh, there are a lot of hedge funds that have some substantial positions in air test systems. They, like I, I believe, believe that this is a stock that is suppressed, suppressed substantially, down 70%. But what that does is put you in a position, if you build a position at these low prices, that when the EV market, when the PC market, when the phone market all comes back, and semiconductors come back into play, that these are the companies that are going to have the exponential gains. I want to remind you again that if you look at the financials of air test systems, they have no debt. They can survive a downturn. But I and, uh, as you see, others believe that this will probably turn around before the end of the year and certainly will be a growth engine in um, 2025. You'll go also got to recognize that there's another player in this game, particularly the EV market. The United States government and the governments of the United States want electric vehicles to be a part of our world. They want to convert us. They feel that it's important relative to global warming and the future survival of the world. So there's a lot of things that are in our favor as we are holders of air uh, test systems. This is how I like to invest. I like to dig in and understand things that the general market does not. I want to know who owns the product, why it's depressed, and why I think it'll come back. I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm a retired financial advisor. This is what I enjoy doing. This is what I enjoy sharing with my tribe. I do that on my website, Best of Us Investors, and we have a program where we look at air, we see where we think and where Wall Street thinks the price of this stock is going and where we should buy into it so as to maximize our returns. I do this on about 34 stocks, all involved in semiconductors and the advent of artificial intelligence and accelerated computing. Take a look at it, best of us investors, and let's see if we can't work together and make this a team sport. Talk to you again tomorrow. Thank you.